Hi, I'm Will. Hi, I'm Risa, and this is Talent Talk. On today's show, we have the amazingly talented and acclaimed singer-songwriter, Maggie Ball. So take a look at a sneak peek of her newest single, Think About Me. Think About Me is probably one of my favorite songs that I wrote over quarantine. When COVID hit, it was really hard for me to deal with the fact that touring was no longer. Touring is such a big piece of who I am, being on the road, and it was really, really hard when I lost that. It took me a little bit to figure out who I was and, and what I wanted, um, and I'm really grateful that I had that time because I was able to fall back in love with music again. Think About Me has a really unique writing process and studio process. I wrote with my good friend Alejandro Medina, and we weren't supposed to write that day, but Think About Me just fell out of our laps. When I went to my producer's house that night, I played him this song and we ended up tracking Think About Me all night. We didn't do it in this gorgeous big old studio. It wasn't planned. We literally did it the day that I wrote it because I knew that we had something special the day that we wrote it. And it's me playing guitar on it. Um, just me tracking it probably at like three in the morning and we had something so beautiful that we knew we had to roll with the idea. We couldn't just let it go. Think About Me might seem like a breakup on the surface, but underneath, there's so much more to it and it means so much more to me than that. I'm so excited for you guys to hear this song and, and know another side of me and I'm really excited to be able to share this little piece of myself with you. Well, hello Maggie, how are you? Hi, how are you? I am doing great and Risa and I are so excited that the audience just got a little sneak peek of your amazing song, Think About Me. And uh, Risa, I know you have a first question, so go for it. Oh, I do. Maggie, I think you're so incredible. I've watched you perform for the past couple of years and I've always wanted to ask you, like, was there a moment or a show that you saw that like changed your world and you're like, yes, this is what I want to do with my life? Actually, yes. So I saw a girl by the name of Caroline Cole play in North Carolina. She was 16 years old. It was at a bluegrass festival. Um, and I was just stopping in, um, went to go say hello. And, and, I, and I saw her play and she told me that she just got signed with Sony um, and was about to go on tour with Reba McIntyre. So of course, like me being, I think I was 12 or 11 at the time, um, me seeing her, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go talk to her. And so I did. And she told me to play anywhere and everywhere I can because I never know who's watching. And I actually went home and wrote my first song that night. And she's probably one of my biggest influences when it comes to um, why I started writing and why I started performing. Um, I'm really grateful that I get, I get to call her a friend today. Um, so I would say that Caroline is definitely the biggest influence. I mean, I've said this before on other shows we've done, but do, do you think that music is therapy? Just curious. 100%. So a lot of people, <laughs> it's kind of funny because my story is a little bit different. I know that people think when a girl my age walks in that they think that Taylor Swift was one of the biggest influences that got me into country music. And I love her. God bless. She's amazing. I went to uh, a classical music school. And so I actually played at Carnegie Hall in seventh grade. <gasps> I picked that up and I didn't, I didn't know that you did a show there. <laughs> Will is all over that. <laughs> yeah, I, well, when I was 12 years old, you, you probably were there. <laughs> well, you beat me. I mean, I was 33 when I headlined <laughs> Carnegie Hall, so I'm going to go cry I, about it in my... I studio. played in an orchestra. I wasn't cool. I was in a little dress. I was in the back. Anyway, but I... Maggie, class. but you're going to headline one day. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. You're going to do it before yeah. you're 33, so you already won. It. Anyway, keep going. Do we have a really big hug backstage? Can I finally meet you in person? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, sorry, continue with the story. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in classical music and I actually started getting bullied at school, which is how I, I started writing music. It wasn't because I saw someone on stage. I mean, I saw Caroline, but I was writing poems before that. I was just writing, not music, because she was the person who got me into writing songs, but I was just writing my words down and writing um, poems and just writing my feelings down. So when you said that music is therapy, it's definitely saved me from a really dark time in my past. And I'm really grateful that music got me out of this dark time from COVID as well. That's amazing, Maggie. And in terms of therapy, I'm sure your fans have told you in private messages and whatnot and comments all over your social medias, but you have such a beautiful, positive presence all over social media. And I'm sure that your presence has also been therapy for others, especially during this time. And I'm curious if you've received that, because I feel that getting to know you through your social media before, you know, meeting via here. Oh my gosh, I definitely have. And so I will never forget this story. So I um, play Virginia a lot. And there's a guy named Gary in Virginia. I think his name is Gary Brown. He's going to freak out that I just shouted him out. <laughs> <laughs> 
but his name is Gary and so I wrote a song called Shine it's never been out I, it's just something for me that I wanted it was like a therapy song for me and it was named Shine and the hook is remember who you are and shine so it's basically about remember where you came from remember who you are um it definitely helped when I was getting bullied to just like remember who I am remember why I wanted to do this and I think I was going through really a dark time like not really realizing who I am or what I wanted as an artist and I remember just looking back and remembering exactly why I started and what I did this for and I have a tattoo on my arm that says remember who you are oh it's beautiful yeah so I got that um first and then when I was in the songwriter room um the, my co-writers were like my daughter is getting bullied at school and so I told her my story and I was like I have a tattoo on my arm that says remember who you are and so we came out with the hook remember who you are and shine so I played that song at a show in Virginia and Gary came up to me and said, Maggie, I've heard you play Shine before. I'm obsessed with it. I love that song. It definitely saved me from a really dark time and he showed me his arm and he got a tattoo of Remember Who You Are on the same spot on my arm, oh. on his arm. Yeah, so we have matching tattoos. Gary and I. I got chills, I have chills. <laughs> That's amazing, Maggie. I mean, yeah. and it's also amazing. And Risa, I know you get this as an artist too. You both have such big reaches with so many different um, fans from not only across the country, but around the world. And, you know, I think about those, those people out there, you never know who you're gonna touch on such a specific level. Well, I'm such a huge believer in signs. And Maggie, I don't know if you are, but I think I know Will is. Um, Maggie, have you had any signs that you were like, yes, I'm meant to be here or yes, you know, this shows me that I'm right where I'm supposed to be? Um, I would say yes. So my story for that would be, um, I, like I said, I started playing violin when I was six years old. I went to uh, Nashville. One, one of my very first times I went to Nashville, my dad took me to the Grand Ole Opry. And the Grand Ole Opry to this day is probably still one of my dream performances. Um, anyway, so I was going backstage and we saw Charlie Daniels, rest in peace. We saw Charlie Daniels play. Um, it was my first time seeing him play. And I brought my violin with me. And so I took a backstage tour, one of the tours you could take either uh, the morning or like the night show. And um, I took the night show. And so afterwards, as I was walking through the hallways of the Grand Ole Opry, Charlie Daniels walked by me and I had him sign my violin. And so ever since then, that moment, that has been probably one of my like craziest moments of like, oh my God, this star is like in front of me. And <laughs> I was definitely starstruck by this like old man standing in front of me. Um, but I would say uh, two months later, um, I opened up for Charlie Daniels. I played uh, the national anthem on violin. Um, and I remember I was sitting there eating my goldfish and literally his manager comes, comes over to me and was like, do you want to play on stage with Charlie? And I was oh. like, God and so like I was six years old I played Devil Went Down in Georgia on stage with Charlie Daniels literally two months after he signed my violin so I'm waiting all I'm waiting for now is the opportunity to step on the circle and then that's a full circle moment no pun intended okay when you get that it. moment which I know you will do you will text us immediately and we will come to see you we will be there at your debut at the Opry for sure okay. with like I'm, I don't know how I'm gonna get through it I'm literally gonna cry like I don't even know what I'm how you're gonna Just, get through it you're totally gonna be great. I have to share a sign story too. And I'd love to hear a sign story from Will too, super quick. Yeah, but like, sure. you just, you, like, you never know how you are going to influence others. And like last mm. CMA, last CMA Fest, I played up, not, you know, before COVID, I played upstairs on the rooftop of Old Red. I have a song I've sung for years called Paper Heart. And you just don't know who's listening, right? And you, the, your fans are amazing. And they, they will tell you when something moves you. And the first line is light as a feather light as a feather easily torn right and it goes on and at the end of the whole thing this woman comes up to me and she said um I was meant to be here today because my son was a state trooper and he passed away last week and our signs were feathers and so when you sang light as a feather to me I knew that my son was in the room with me and there I have a picture somewhere I had to, we were just I just embraced her and we just cried I just cried on stage with her for like like your fans become oh your God. family to some degree because and you know yeah. I know I hope to see this woman again at other shows I get emotional thinking about it now but like those are signs that we're doing we're meant to be doing what it is that we're doing you know I'm feeling signs of like I'm just like we have to we have to do some playing and I'm just <laughs> curious about something Maggie yes are you ready for game time uh bring it on like Kong <laughs> well
Oh my gosh. Well, Maggie, I, we have to ask you, this is a super fun thing. Do you have like a number that stands out like a lucky number in your life or a number of significance? I do. Number 16. 16. Risa, you do 16. And Maggie, if you had to pick another number, what would it be? 21. I just turned 21, baby. Woo! I'm feeling that. Okay. I got 16. Ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, all right. You're on a road trip and you stop for lunch. What kind of place did you go to and what did you have for your meal? <laughs> Lisa, you have no idea. This is a big topic of conversation when I'm on road trips. So oh, we have like a family feud. I would say band feud because when we're on the road, it really depends what market we're playing. If we're in Florida, we are getting Moe's. We are getting Wawa. It's like go to. If we're like somewhere up north, maybe we might do Sheets. Um, Sheets. Like uh, Chipotle. Uh, but it really depends. Oh, if we're in North Carolina, we get barbecue. Mm -hmm. That is a big topic of conversation. <laughs> I love that. I love I that. I love it. Um, okay. So where is the most inspiring place you've ever been? Oh my gosh. That is a good question. I have to think about that. Um, I really love nature and I really love um, just like going on hikes and going on walks and just like seeing um the outside world. I know that sounds really strange. Um, I wouldn't say I have necessarily a place, but every summer my family and I would travel in an RV to Nashville so I could write songs and that my brothers could play in the water park over at Nashville Shores. Um, so I wouldn't say it's necessarily a place, but it's very def it's definitely very inspiring being in a 35 foot home with five people and two dogs. <laughs> It sounds like your family are really close. And they're so the supportive. They're so supportive of you. It's awesome. They're very amazing. I'm very blessed to have the family that I have. That's amazing. Well, Maggie, I have a question. Would you yeah. mind playing uh, a little bit of your song that we can just well, three of us just jam to? Yeah, can we? You know what this means? This is the first time I've ever played it on like an interview before. Oh, this is exciting! A piece of your heart that won't let go. But she would never, never meant to be Sometimes I wonder if you ever moved on Or if you wish I was still wrapped up in your arms But I ain't gonna lie, you cross my mind I think about those what ifs all the time As soon as I'm feeling really gone And did I really move? Wow. Thanks. Amazing. Well, Maggie, thank you so much for joining us today on Talent Talk. You are such an incredible talent. Your star is, I mean, it's 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 limitless. It's like beyond freaking galaxy. And uh, it is, and we'll be in the front row cheering you on this whole time. We promise. We just can't wait thank to watch. So I love you both. Oh. <laughs> Love you. Love you. <laughs>